Hi everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot. Um, today we're going to do a soulmate snapshot. So this is going to be a soulmate snapshot to just kind of, there's this, um, I woke up to a lot of messages this morning, so I'm going to be very candid with you. I was going to take the day off um, and then I saw a whole bunch of messages that were kind of along a pattern and I thought, all right, so maybe tomorrow will be the day <laughs> that I take off. So that's kind of my plan. Um, but it was just like there's this energy that's pounding on your door. Um, but it won't. It, it's like, why are you pounding on my door if you won't talk to me? Why are you pounding on my door if you won't say a word? Energetically pounding on that door and yet won't break the ice, won't break the silence and and be a better communicator. So that's really what the question is going to be about today. Um, it's a soulmate snapshot. So those are a little bit quicker. Um, still a reading for the collective. And so it's one of those situations where if it resonates for you, great. Um, maybe check out some of the other readings. Maybe check it out and see if there's something that works for you. Um, as far as other messages that have come out, because they're all very much connected. So if it's you, it, it may very much be that you're part of the collective. Um, we're going to start by just kind of getting that energetic backdrop because I can feel um, the intensity of it. And so I guess I'm not super surprised at the notes that I saw when I woke up this morning. Um, we have the world. Something is wrapping up and ending, but it feels like it's like catharsis and sadness at the same time. There's something about it that's like not exactly it will be missed either. It's just catharsis and sadness and happiness and kind of um, tiredness, exhaustion. There's a, an overwhelming and kind of growing sense of exhaustion. Um, we have the hermit in the reverse. So with it being in the reverse, there's some wisdom out there that still needs to be gathered, still needs to be garnered, but it's not happening for some reason. Um, <clears throat> I get the sense of there just being too much else going on. Okay, so this could be for you or your person. I kind of get the sense it's a bit of a shared energy. Um, but there's, there's a lot that's kind of maybe threatening to take you away from that right now makes you feel like you're falling behind on things you can even and your person is definitely going to be feeling this too you can kind of feel like we're here you can even predict where you're going to fall behind and when it's um got a heavy emotional component to it and yet i think you're moving toward a better place well we have the sun the sun is in that background energy the sun is in that background energy. It is kind of um, an, an underpinning of not positivity, but happiness. Um, the ability to be happier, to be happy and to have those glimmers of happiness. We have a death card that's come up here. Um, and it kind of feels like, so it's the death card, but it's also very heavy on the rebirth piece. Um, so it's always the cycle of death and rebirth that we're looking at with this, but it feels like in the Northern Hemisphere, we've just moved into autumn. We've just moved into the fall, and yet this has that kind of feeling of rebirth like what you would associate with the springtime. Feels emotional. There may be something um, in the energy that is kind of overwhelming and almost wants to go to the positive, but you wouldn't, you can't figure out why exactly. Um, but there's this feeling in the air, and I feel like this is more your person, um, like there's a crispness in the air that makes them feel like no matter what they need to do, they'll be able to do it. They're facing this decision. We've seen this in several of the readings, and it's, I mean, it's a challenge to them to figure out which way they need to go, but I feel like they're, <clears throat> they're starting to gather confidence around the fact that they'll be able to go whichever direction they need to, and then they'll be able to compensate for it. This has to do with um, kind of an, uh, it's a connection with their higher self, but it's one that they almost don't realize that they're having, okay? That's a, this is one of the reasons that we feel their energy charging forward. One of the reasons that it feels like, as one person puts it, this energy is just pounding on my door when you won't say a word. Um, this is what kind of pushes it forward. They're, they're creating kind of like, um, I was going to say disconnected, but that's not right. It's, um, 
it's a it's like an a, an awkward connection i guess with their higher power that is allowing them to move forward but it's not very graceful right now they will they will later have perspective that helps them to kind of come through that um be a little bit more graceful about this sort of thing but right now it's like they're trying out new legs um interesting so why are they pounding i guess we're starting to see a little bit about why they're pounding on your door because they're kind of they have this um increased ability to feel but they're a little bit afraid of it so you can see that they're probably um what they've what they've been doing is they will um get they have this increased ability to feel and it's only ever so slightly increased they immediately get emo like emotionally flooded and then you start to see them retract again and then they open up they get vulnerable for a moment sometimes it's just in the energy sometimes they actually reach out and then they retract and um and it repeats over and over but every time they open up they have a little bit more of a capacity for emotion and love than they did before so as that increases their perspectives around this are also going to improve but right now they're kind of <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised to see them moving back into retraction mode again. So what is this? Why are they beating on your door? What is the um, overwhelming urge that causes all of these people to feel like they need to send the note on this particular day? Because it was really a pattern. It's really, it was interesting. I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and take the day off because I, you know, what it is is I, I haven't taken a day off since... February and um, I realized like I have a, a job and a career and I'm senior enough in my career that I get to coach a lot of people that are earlier on and if somebody came to me and said I haven't taken a day off since February I would say what's going on you know and they if they said well I just enjoy it so much you know I might stay you might still take a day off and so that was what I told myself I was going to do. But then I saw all those notes. Okay, so we have the um, we have the Ace of Wands that has come out here. Um, this is an uncontrollable urge. It's like we talk about the pressure rising, and it seems like we've seen the pressure rising, but no explosion, a couple times now. This is essentially the it's got something has to give. It's not necessarily a huge explosion, but it is definitely like something has to give. Um, and that is part of why you're feeling what you're feeling. It's like they're they're trying to hold something in, but they have a limited ability to do so. Yeah, it's interesting. No wonder. No wonder there were a lot of notes because you're going to be feeling that. And the intensity of it is just very, um, very high. Okay, so we have the Six of Cups. A lot of memories in here. A lot of memories associated with this positive memories generate a lot of nostalgia um it's got the warmth of springtime even if some of those memories happened in colder climates or colder seasons interesting a lot of the sense of springtime and yet the smell of the fall i'm, I'm getting all the senses as i do this reading so we have the six of pentacles in the reverse and then there's this realization that something has gone wrong um this is part of why this, if you have a person who you can kind of feel is wanting to hit send on a text, this is one of the reasons why they're not able to communicate, not able to speak. There's something here about um, making a decision not to speak, which is interesting. That's not usually how the Queen of Swords comes out, but it's very much about <clears throat> a decision that they've made not to speak. Because they've made such a big mess of something or so they believe that there's not really going to be any coming back from that. So they feel like they just kind of have to hold on to the pain of it by themselves. Um, whoa, interesting. Not where I thought that was going to go. Um, there's a lot of nostalgia though. There's some of these turnover. Yes, there's a lot of nostalgia. There's a lot of kind of pain in that nostalgia. It's an aching sort of nostalgia, but it's really, it needs a, a release valve. There's not been an option for a release valve. They have been really good about controlling themselves, controlling their emotions, doing what they needed to do to 
remain quiet in some cases, remain distant in some cases, but it's carrying an incredibly heavy load. So we've got the King of Chalices over here talking about the um, ability to kind of hold those emotions in, and I'm doing the best I can to hold these emotions in, but with the Ten of Wands, it's just such a heavy load. They haven't figured out Again, we see it over and over. They haven't figured out what they control and what they don't control, and they're just kind of trying to carry it all. Um, you get the advice not to do this, and they get the advice not to do this, except they're not here to hear it. So we have three cards that have come out here, actually four, it looks like. Um, five of chalices in the upright, two of wands in the reverse, the magician in the upright, and then the judgment card here in the upright. So taking those in turn... Um, <clears throat> with the five of chalices, this is that tendency to focus on things that are not comforting, to allow things to be less comforting. Let's see here. Oops. Two of wands. <clears throat> this is that tendency to lean on something that they use as an excuse to keep the two of you separate. So this could be that age gap. It could be a religious, a racial, uh, socioeconomic difference. Um, something that breeds disparity within a certain circle, but not within others. So it could be you've got five years age gap and they think it's a big deal and someone in their family thinks, it, thinks it's a big deal, but you really don't. You know, it could be that simple. With the magician... You're both feeling a little bit more capable of actually shaping your surroundings right now. And that makes it kind of like this magic bubbling up. But by the same token, it's also like it's a lot of pressure on your emotions right now. And it's very challenging. So what do you do? And it forces you into a place where if you just allow it to, you know, you ride with the flow, it will take you to a place where you're going to have to answer some questions for yourself. Answer some questions to yourself about what... um it's a it's a situation of judgment. It really is. Um, <clears throat> some of those things that have been a little bit unresolved for you are going to come back up. And here's the thing. I get the sense that pushing those things away will not um, will not help this energy. So let's get a feel for what would help the energy. We always want to find out what it's going to be um, helpful for you, given what's happening, because this pressure that you're feeling, your person is feeling it also. They're just feeling it a little differently because in a lot of cases, the pressure that they have is they're, they've made a decision to remain quiet, and that decision is being very difficult for them. Very difficult for them to follow through. <clears throat> so what can you be doing about all this? With this extra pressure, my first response was to go, and this is before I saw the emails, but my first response was you know, I rolled out of bed and started with the workout which is pretty standard for me, but I like dove into it like it was a place to hide. And I thought, hmm, it's usually a sign. So then in the, in the meditation afterwards, I realized that there was kind of a lot going on there and that I was feeling a lot of uh, <clears throat> things that needed to be kind of shielded against more so than usual. Um, so I went ahead and got into my email and found that whole bunch of you saying what is this this is like it's poking at me it's punching at me okay so we have the high priestess meditation is the key that's where I was headed with it that's what I did um it I don't know that it helped but here's the thing you've got that extra manifestation energy with you right now so it may be incredibly helpful to take that manifestation energy into your day go ahead and you know allow it to um Allow yourself to get to that place where you can allow the um, the judgment to, to kick in. So there are things that are going to show up for you. And I know they have been showing up for me. Places where I wonder if I did the right thing and I just kind of have to go over it again in my mind. Um, running away from it won't help. We have the chariot. This is that sense that, again, you are stuck in a... You're in a you're at a crossroads, so you have to make a decision about going one way or the other, or something has to happen. So in this in this card, you'll see um, it's this way or it's that way, and it's kind of got that sense of you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. 
<clears throat> regardless of where you decide to go, where you are standing right now is not an option. Do you have the Eight of Wands? There's a stagnancy around you, like the energy around you feels like it's almost irritatingly stagnant, it feels like. But you'll notice you have all of this potential to build something, okay? You have this incredible potential for building something. You have this temperance card. It's like you have um, the stability in your foundation to be able to do whatever you need to right now. And if you look deep into yourself, you'll know this is a good time for that. This is um, a little bit like what I, I think we were hoping October would be like in the sense that you feel like you've got, this is Ace of Wands, you've got that capacity to um, get yourself lost in something that is amazing and new. I have a, a hobby, um, something that you've always wanted to do and you're kind of jumping into it. It's not so much a person. Again, it is not that sense of turning your back on this person over here, but embracing something new walking away from the things that end up in like wasted energy with you. So that's the five of swords. And it is all about walking away from things that just wrap you up, but don't deliver. You know, it just, it, these are, this is using your energy for things that are beneficial to you, allowing yourself to let your guard down and try something new so that at least once in a while you look around yourself and say, even if it's just to yourself, I did not expect that I would end up here. This is, you know, this is all about allowing something new into your life that keeps coming out the message of allowing something new into your life and allowing yourself to expand your energy to it. That keeps coming up for us. And it keeps sounding like you don't turn off the bond to this person, like turning off the bond to this person, blocking you, um, blocking this other person will block you. I can't remember which of my viewers now said it, but it was very articulate. It was in one of those, um, I'm using you as a sounding board, using you as a journal sort of emails that I receive. And they said they had blocked their person, but they recognized that blocking that person actually functioned to block them. It's true. That's what's going to happen. Blocking them blocks you. So this is about letting those walls down, letting those guards down and, 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 you know, allowing the door to remain open between the two of you, the emotional door that they could potentially walk through, but not watching to see that they walk through it. It's that same concept that just kind of, it likes to repeat for us. Um, it's just so hard to get to. Sometimes it's a matter of, you know, um, there's just a lot of interference, whether it comes from your person, your person's third party energy, your own, um, things that are happening in your life. You are encouraged to take what comes to you as far as the wisdom that comes to you. So there's wisdom that's coming to you. It's going to create a situation that is a tower situation. So this is an uncomfortable situation that comes from, I believe, this judgment over here. That's energy that's impacting both of you. And it's going to cause you to have to kind of go into yourself and say, what do, what am I okay with and what am I not? What can I change and what can I just kind of take forward and grow from? So with the moon card in reverse, it's a matter of this information is coming to you because you are now strong enough to carry it. And you have to let the Seven of Swords energy sort of bloom and blossom in you in order to allow this not to crush you and to weigh too much. It's, um, there are going to be things in here that you look at about yourself that you don't have the capacity to change because the opportunity is now behind you for one reason or another, you know. Um, this is where, what I'm seeing here is that you've got to find other ways to cope with things that you wish had gone differently. Your person over here, one of the ways that they've chosen to cope with things, they recognize things didn't go well, is to vow to themselves to remaining quiet, you know, and that's, I don't know that that's the direction you want to go. I think your, your, your response may look a little different from that, but you're also a pretty different person. So, um, you've got the King of Swords here, resist the urge to um, go so far into yourself. So we know that there's some hermit time that's required over here, but resist, resist the urge to go so far into yourself that you, in your meditation, completely isolate yourself. Make sure that you're continuing to connect with that higher power. Um, 
So that is, I think, our soulmate snapshot for today. Again, I was like, I was going to take the day off today. I will probably shift my day off to tomorrow, um, assuming something crazy doesn't happen in the energy. But, you know, the soulmate snapshots are kind of small and sometimes feel like, um, you know, a day off anyway. So I'm going to go back to having the rest of my day off now, right? Maybe I really have one tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Um, otherwise, I will either see you tomorrow or in the next couple days.